Mars, known for its dry and desolate red surface. Here on Earth in Hanksville, Utah, you may not find the surface much different. And for that very reason, the Mars Society's annual University Rover Challenge is held here. Ten teams stretching across the globe have assembled in southern Utah to show off and test their prototypes of what a future Mars rover may look and react like in a Martian environment. Each rover has four time tasks to tackle in the desert and around the Mars Desert Research Site. Servicing equipment, assisting astronauts, collecting samples, and navigating a rough terrain obstacle course. Kevin Sloan was on site to explain some of the tasks. We're here up at the north site. There are three sites in this competition. This is the one that's farthest away. Um, and we have two challenges um, that are occurring here with the teams. Tell us about those. Well, two tasks going on right now are the astronaut assistance task and also the equipment servicing task. Uh, the equipment servicing task, uh, just as sounds, there's a, an equipment panel that's located about 100 meters away. Teams have to drive up to it. Uh, the notion of this task is that there's a panel, a remote panel out in the field. It's gone faulty. Uh, the rover is deployed to debug it. So there's actually a set of instructions printed on the panel, just like you'd find with a rental equipment generator or anything else. Uh, using the cameras on board the rover, they have to read the instructions, uh, figure out the sequence of tasks that they need to go through to reboot everything. So the astronaut assistance task, uh, another one, hopefully the task name explains most of it, but there are four astronauts working out in the field. Uh, and you can imagine that if you have a group working out in an EVA and extravehicular activity, uh, astronauts out there, they get to a point where they realize they don't have the right tool in hand. Rather than having to walk back, it's easy if you have a rover that's just a personal assistant able to bring you out the tools you need. Uh, this also comes in very handy if there's ever an emergency in the field, an astronaut becomes distressed and they need equipment to work with them. So a lot of applications of that. Uh, so we have rough GPS coordinates of uh, where we think the, the astronauts are. Uh, you can assume that there would be some crew telemetry system on Mars for astronauts working out in the field. Uh, we give that to the rovers. They have to be able to identify the astronauts in the field. Uh, and those suits blend in pretty closely with the environment. They have to make their way out there. Uh, a couple of the astronauts are actually out of line of sight communication. So teams have to come up with some interesting solutions to figure that out. Not every moment can be work, though, and University of Washington Robotics shared what they do in their downtime. Personally, I, I play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. You know, I, you know it, it, I, it helps me relax. It helps me just get, get all of the stress. It helps me just build social skills that is important as I'm a team leader. Like, it help, it, I, I feel it's a great tool that does it. And hey, it's fun. I get to play games. You know, roll, roll and dice and roll with natural 20 crits all day. Yeah. <laughs> I love to ski. All I, right. It's always my uh, winter hobby. I've been skiing for about five, six years. Got season passes every year. And not very good at it, but I love it anyway. <laughs> I'm a private pilot. It's uh, a bit of a, a hobby. You know, I like to fly around. Uh, I also uh, sail sailboats. It's fun to do. And every once in a while, well, actually more often, uh, I decide I'm going to sit down for a nice relaxing game of Call of Duty, which is a mistake. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not relaxing at all. <laughs> Outside of robotics, I am addicted to jigsaw puzzles. Jigsaw quite, puzzles. Quite horribly addicted to jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle can be done in under 24 hours. Actually, probably under eight, but. That's <laughs> impressive. While many teams suffered setbacks, there were some who stood above the rest. Six seasoned engineering students from Bielistik University of Technology in Poland took first place with their Hyperion craft. Hi, this is Leslie Meredith with Space.com, and I'm here with the captain of one of three teams from Poland, the Hyperion team. 
whose rover just made the terrain course an absolute record time, and I know they're feeling really good about their prospects for the competition. Yes, uh, we are really, uh, we have a good rover, and uh, we are very happy that uh, everything was fine. The Hyperion rover um, looks very sophisticated, looks very sturdy. Um, most of the components look to be enclosed here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your design? And I know you're happy, right? Yeah, we are really happy. Uh, the design, actually the design took a few months. We have uh, the suspension. Actually, I didn't so suspension like this in any of rover which is competing, we can uh, drive on the rocks because we have uh, high clearance. Also, we used uh, a damper which can move in two sides that provide us a uh, working for this suspension. We have an articulated manipulator with I don't know like five or six degrees of freedom. Uh, the camera which can move uh, directionally and uh, vertically. Uh, so it worked well, the, the task went great and we are very happy. Through tragedy and triumph, one thing is for sure. The Mars Society's annual University Rover Challenge will continue to provide great learning opportunities to explore and even live on our sister planet of Mars. I'm Leslie for Space.com. Space.com.